Hey guys, this is Peter from X Pro Heli. Uh, today I'm going to show you the Iris Plus and show you the cool features about it. Uh, Iris Plus is a great little quadcopter, especially if you're a guy on a budget and you're just looking to get some GoPro aerial footage. Maybe you're into real estate, maybe you're just doing it for fun. This is a great little platform to get some really cool shots. Um, the Iris Plus is manufactured by a company called 3D Robotics and uh, it uses a open source hardware platform uh, started by the DIYDrones.com community called the APM Copter. Um, a lot of work has gone into the Iris Plus. Uh, the Iris Plus has a few new features to it than the original Iris did. Uh, there's a follow me mode where you can have the quad follow your phone or Pebble smartwatch GPS position so you can you know, go out and leash the quad as you're walking and get shots of your subject remotely with your phone. Um, kind of a neat feature, some things to watch out for, but all in all, it's a great little quadcopter. Um, today, I'm going to just do a quick little test flight. Um, I'm out here at the park, right here on the pitcher's mound of this baseball field. Um, nice wide open area. Uh, one thing that you want to know about the iris and the flight electronics is that the whole system is uh it you know for one thing the electronics on the flight controller are sensitive the gps and the compass uh you don't want to be taken off on top of something that's metal or something that is giving a magnetic interference the compass will get all confused and messed up um, the gps antenna is sensitive as well so you want to make sure that you're in a nice wide open area you don't want to be taking off next to you know a big truck or buildings and stuff like that so let's go ahead and get into it so first thing you want to do is power on your radio it's just the power switch here in the middle pretty straightforward uh, next thing you want to do is power on your quad and you can see here I already got my battery pack slid right in here to the quad going to go ahead and plug in these connectors. It's going to initialize a little ringtone and then we're going to go ahead and tuck these wires in here, close the battery door. And so now what's going on is the iris is going through a startup cycle. It's going to do some pre-flight checks on the flight controller. It's going to make sure that the accelerometer is calibrated, the barometer is calibrated. On the controller here, you can see uh, we have a little bit of a display here. There's a telemetry unit that's built into the, uh, the controller, which is kind of a nice feature. So if you go ahead and push the down button on the controller, you can look and view at the uh, telemetry data. So you have how many satellites you have locked onto, your battery voltage, how many milliamp hours you've consumed on the battery pack. And then you have some uh, flight telemetry data here on the left. You have your altitude, you have your speed, and then you have your distance from your home position. So I'm going to show you how the phone hooks up real quick. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got just a simple Android phone. This is a Samsung Galaxy S5. I'll go ahead and pop open the USB here. I have downloaded Droid Planner 2. It's a real straightforward app. You get it on the Google Play Store. Just plug in your uh, radio antenna this is a 3dr radio telemetry antenna that they provide you with the quad and go ahead and plug this in and i have my droid planner set up to automatically activate the app when it powers on so you can see the screen i don't know if you can see because of the glare but uh, the droid planner 2 just automatically pulled up it's opened i'm going to go ahead and uh, press the there's a there's a little sub menu up here in the right hand corner go ahead and press connect GPS 3D lock. so you can see this is kind of nice because you have you have this whole telemetry system here you know on your radio and then as well being displayed on your phone and you have some audible uh, commands here too that you can you know reference while you're flying so if I was to switch into a different flight mode I'll show you for example, loiter. I just loaded into loiter mode, which is the GPS mode. I'll go back to my attitude mode or their stabilized mode. Hold hold. 
So that's kind of a neat feature. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fire this up. Little safety feature with the Iris Plus is you need to hit this red button before you can arm the quad. So that's a kind of a nice little safety feature. You wanna make sure that uh, all your sticks are in the back position. Return to launch is off. Uh, your loiter, I, I, I'm gonna keep it in uh, altitude hold for right now um, for a takeoff and uh, we'll go ahead and get this arm. So we're gonna depress the button. You're gonna hear the ESCs fire up. The red light on the button has turned solid, so that means that we're now ready to arm the quad. So to arm the quad, we're gonna hold the stick down and to the right for about three or four seconds, and that's going to uh, emit a, a long tone and then fire up the motor. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna step back a little bit. You always wanna give yourself some space. Always a good practice. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm the motors. See, now the props are gonna spin up. And so now I'm going to raise the throttle right above 50% to take off. You see, I was in stabilized mode, their altitude hold mode, and just had a little, little bit of a bump on takeoff there, not too bad. But right now I'm at 50% throttle, just kind of hovering here. Uh, wind is real, real light right now, so there's not really much going on. Um, if it was a little more breezy, the quad would tend to drift kind of like this. I'm actually doing that input right now just to show you what the flight characteristics would be. But uh, kind of a cool thing if we flip into uh, our GPS mode, our loiter mode, you can see the quad is now locked on to that last GPS position. I'm at 50% throttle. Go down. Look at my radio, I can see I got 10 satellites, consumed about 300 milliamp hours so far. Doing real good. Um, when you're first starting out with the Iris, it's just a good practice just to try flying in a box pattern. So set the quad at a good, you know, a good 15 to 20 feet, 50% throttle, and just, just try flying in a box. Just go to the left. You know, let off, it's gonna hold that GPS position. Let's go forward. You can hear my phone going off. The, the phone app tells you how much battery life you have left, which is kind of cool. So it just said I had 90% battery left. So continue my little box practice flight session here. Go to the right, hold that position for a little bit and come back here to about first base. So that works pretty good. Um, you know, you can, you can now, after you get comfortable flying in a box pattern, you can kind of start changing your orientation a little bit and just get used to flying in different directions. So this is kind of turn to the left 90 degrees going forward and fly that box pattern again and go and turn it back so I'm facing to the left and now I'm going to give it some right stick and fly in a box pattern. Now I'm giving it some back stick to go to the right. This is good practice just to get used to the orientation of the quad and your vantage point and get your fingers used to flying. Um, once you get used to this it's kind of like riding a bicycle. You'll, you don't forget. You get, it's basically you know training your muscle memory so it's probably good to start off on a computer simulator or a toy quad, but uh, you know this platform is pretty forgiving, pretty e relatively easy to fly. So I'm going to go ahead and flip into altitude mode. So now I am not flying with the GPS; I'm just flying with altitude assistance. So I'm going to let me just show you guys what this thing can do. I'm flying a nice figure eight. You see we got the turret gimbal with the GoPro mounted on the bottom there. And it's doing a pretty good job keeping it level to the horizon. You see I'm kind of flying nose in, trying to just fly some simple box patterns. Or excuse me, some simple figure eights. Nothing too crazy. You 
It's just a nice smooth platform, pretty easy to fly. XP2 is pretty nice. I'd say I like the XP2 a little bit better, but uh, this is pretty neat platform as well. Yeah. So Hans was just saying you really are never going to be flying in figure eights to get good aerial video. So, you know, if you're practicing for aerial video, of course, you're going to be wanting to fly, you know, a little smoother, you know, get, get some cool lift shots. Um, let's see. So on the controller, there's a knob that can control the tilt of the GoPro. So we're going to go ahead and tilt that camera down, get a, get a straight down shot here. I'm going to go hover over second base and unfortunately I don't have the GoPro running right now, but you know, nice smooth ascents like this and you can roll the tilt back on the camera and get a cool little vantage point. We can't see any mountains today because of the clouds, but kind of cool. So let's do something fun and autonomous real quick. We got 70% battery left. Uh, let's flip this into return to launch. I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually lower the quad down a little bit because when I enter return to launch, it's actually gonna climb 20 meters before it comes back to its home position. I'm gonna fly it out a little bit further too. So we're gonna come out here maybe to about where this goal, soccer goal is. So I'm in loiter mode right now. I'm gonna go ahead and flip my return to launch. So right now I'm not doing anything. It, this is all autopilot. And so this is gonna come back. We're gonna see how close we come back to home, so I was just a few feet from the pitcher's mound. So this is still all autonomous. Drop the throttle, disarmed. Pretty cool little system, real powerful platform. There's a lot of autonomous flight features that you can do with it. Probably show you that on another video.